mean to have passion? We hear about passion in advertising, we read about it in the self-help section at the bookstore, or we hear about it in our churches. But what is it really? How do you get it? Is it something you wait to have happen? Hi, my name is Dr. Karen Keller. Passion is the fourth trait in our Seven Traits of Influence series. The first trait is confidence. We had two parts, part one and two. The second trait is commitment. The third trait is courage. And now we are looking at passion. Everyone has passion about something. We are born that way. It may be passion about a new day, or it may be about getting a call from someone or learning something new. It can be simple or it can be complicated. But whether it is simple or complicated, passion is a compelling emotion. It's intense emotional drive or excitement and a strong liking, desire, or devotion to an activity, an object, or a concept. So passion is mostly emotional, and it's a state of strong desire. What about passion at work? In the past, companies used a more authoritarian management style to weather economic changes or to keep people focused. Well, things have changed. Organizations are realizing the way things used to be done can stifle or smother the passion of employees or even executives. There are three practices that occur in companies that create barriers to passion. The first practice is downward communication. This is when communication flows only from the top. Feedback is either not sought or is invited only at certain times of the year. Dr. Edward Deming, the genius behind modern methods of management, which by the way fueled the Japanese car industry, states that communication needs to be flowing in all directions at all times in the company. This increases passion at every level of the company. What needs to happen is for companies to regularly initiate upward streams of communication. They need to encourage a fresh and even flow of new ideas. Now the second practice is conflict is met with disrespect. This is when people share different viewpoints or ideas that may be in conflict with the boss or management and then they are met with sarcasm or disrespect. People then feel dismissed or unintelligent. They soon learn that to share their passion isn't going to be valued by the powers that be. So how can this be changed? The company needs to start growing and mentoring the company's emotional intelligence by inviting respectful debate and disagreement. Or if that's uncomfortable, start a regular brainstorming process, but make sure to cover the steps for brainstorming to get your best results. And the third practice that creates barriers to passion is to shun new ideas. When people at a company come up with new ideas, they're excited, they're enthused, or they're very passionate about what could be. They are the first witnesses to possibility. But when they are told they are focusing on the wrong things, this makes people refrain from sharing or expressing new thoughts or ways of doing things better. The outcome of this is missed creativity, lost opportunities, and improvements that vanish, all because passion for something new has been shut down. Now the way to move away from fear or dismissal of new ideas is to identify areas where authority can be shared. Make it okay to make mistakes, even encourage mistakes because as smart companies know, mistakes result in great innovations. Just ask Art Fry, who accidentally invented the post-it note at 3M. What is important for companies or organizations to realize is that passion enables you to overcome internal and external obstacles, allowing you to see the world as a place of endless potential. Your passionate force looks at every event and discovers what can be, what should be, and what will be. You see, passion is a gift of your spirit, united with the sum of all of your life experience. It affords you the power to live and communicate with unrestrained enthusiasm and eagerness. It is most apparent when your mind, your body, and your spirit work together to create and develop and express your feelings, your ideas, and your most sacred values. Passion creates energy, an energy that's noticeable and transferable. 
What you need to do now is identify and practice your passion. How strong is it? To what degree does it exist for you personally? What is your passion doing for you? So go to the link on this page or in this video and take the Keller Influence Indicator, which is an assessment that gives you a benchmark from which to measure where you are on the passion scale. And it will also measure six additional scales, including confidence, commitment, courage, empowering, trustworthiness, and likability. Yes, you get a measurement on where you are on all seven scales, along with a total K-Factor score. Go there now to find out how passionate you really are.